Today we're going to expand on what we learned about arithmetic sequences to actually write a function that represents how to find any point or any term in that sequence. If you're given the term number and the this basic function that you're going to make, then you'll be able to find any term, even if it's number 2000, and you won't have to add up all the terms to find it. So the key to this is because the terms of an arithmetic sequence have a common difference, since you're always subtracting or adding the same amount, you can write a linear function that describes the sequence. Just like yesterday, you probably noticed that this looks like a line. And you can use a linear function to graph that, or not to graph it, to represent those amounts. So this function can be used to find any term of the sequence without having to list them all and add them all together. Okay, this writing's a little bit small here. I'm going to zoom in a bit. So there's a basic equation that can help you find that equation. This is basically a very generic equation, and you're going to plug in certain numbers, and then that will help you find the more specific equation just for that function or just for that sequence. And so there's some key things. We're going to have to find d is the distance. I just want to highlight this. Distance between terms. And then a sub 1 is the first term of the sequence. So generally you're going to have you're going to have a opportunity to find those amounts and then plug it straight in. So let's do that right now. So the first thing you want to do is find d equals, it looks like this time to go from 14 to 11 you add negative 3. To go from 11 to 8 you also add negative 3 and keep going. So it looks like the distance between the numbers is negative 3. And then I guess distance is normally positive but this isn't exactly a distance. It has to be negative if, if it's going downward. And then a sub 1 is just the first term. Whichever one is listed first is going to be that amount. OK, now let's write this a little bigger. This is the formula that's in the little box. And it makes sense when you think about it. So you have a starting point right here. And you're basically adding a certain number of those differences until you get to the one that you want. And let's plug in. So we're going to leave a sub n generic like this. And we're going to plug in 14 for a sub 1. Plus n is also going to be generic. So notice that the n's are going to be our new input when we use this formula. And now you're, the thing you're going to do every time is you're going to distribute whatever the distance is. So negative 3 times n is negative 3n. Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. And now let's kind of recopy everything else. And let's write it in slope-intercept form. Since this is similar to a line, it will help you visualize everything. So let's write this part first. And we can simplify the 14 plus the 3 to get 17. And this is your formula. So this formula will, will tell us any term in the sequence if you have the term number. And now we're going to use this to find the 50th term. We definitely don't want to have to add up 50 negative 3's over and over and over to find all those. So let's write the equation that we just found And you're going to substitute in 50 for n. So you'd say a sub 50 that identifies which one we're finding equals negative 3 times 50 plus 17. Negative 3 times 50 is negative 150. Oops, didn't leave myself enough space there. Plus 17. And punch into the calculator if you need to. So when you add those, you get negative 
133. 133. That would be the 50th term. Or we could probably write it down here. Okay. Next example. So, remember the first thing you want to do is find a sub 1 and d. So d equals, looks like we are adding 8. Just double check a few times. Yep, that holds true. We're adding 8 every time. Since we're adding, it's going to be positive, and then a sub n, oh, I'm sorry, not a sub n, a sub 1 equals 8. And let's plug it into our formula. a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Keep the n's generic. Multiply to get rid of your, your parentheses. 8 times n is 8n. 8 times negative 1 is negative 8. This one's a little funny because you'll notice 8 minus 8, those essentially cancel each other out. So we get 0 there. So a sub n equals 8n. And looking back, you can see that that is actually the case. So the first term, 8 times 1 is 8. Second term, 8 times 2 is 16. Most of them don't simplify quite that much. Okay, now we're going to find a sub 25. And there's no reason that we're finding a sub 25. This is just a thing to practice using this. a sub 25 equals 8 times 25. And then you get 200. All right, last problem d equals, it looks like we are getting smaller and we're subtracting 1 every time. So d equals negative 1. a sub 1 equals 1. There's a lot of 1's there. It'll be interesting to see what happens. a sub n equals, so we're plugging into this formula. Maybe I'll bring it down so that we have it right in front of us. Okay. Oops, took a little too much. Okay, so we've got a sub 1 is 1 plus n minus 1. That's always going to just stay like that. d is negative 1. Negative 1 times n is negative n. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. All right, let's do our simplifying. 1 plus 1 is 2. And let's put this kind of out in front. So it's negative n plus 2. There's our formula. And just because the instructions are asking us to, we're going to say a sub 25 equals negative 25 because you're substituting it straight in for n. So it becomes negative plus 2 negative 25 plus 2 different signs, so we subtract. 25 is bigger than 2, so 23 is negative. Alright, message me and we can meet on Zoom if you